Hey everybody, SRT Joe Vita here. I'm at the Mopar booth at SEMA 2021, and guess who I'm with? I'm Mark Trossel, head of design of Ram and Mopar. Today we're going to look at a couple of the vehicles in the Mopar booth. This is the first one. I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so this is our Mopar 22 Durango. Uh, super excited to introduce it here. We've got a you know, long history of uh, Mopar branded vehicles starting back in 2010 with our Challenger, the first one. I was actually involved with that one. And we kept with a pretty strong um, you know, paint scheme similar. This one, uh, two colors we're offering, uh, white and black, offset blue, Mopar blue stripe. We're only building 250 of them, 200 for the States, 50 for Canada. Um, you know, our customers love the you know, just the unique, you know, special touches we put on it. This one, we have Mopar Blue Brembo brakes on it. Um, we, uh, on the interior side, some really cool stuff. The, we've got our crushed carbon uh, door insert, Mopar Blue accent. Uh, yeah, the stitching, the uh, serial um, the number bin on the uh, uh, passenger side as well. And, you know, our customers just love the, 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 the the, the uniqueness that these vehicles offer. I've, I've met people that own every single one of them. Uh, so it's really cool that we're keeping, you know, keeping that going. And as you know, I'm into rare vehicles because I have my Super V, but I don't have a Mopar edition yet, so maybe. There you go, perfect, <laughs> perfect. Now what number is this one actually? The, well, this one actually, I think we put, in, instead of putting a serial number, we put a series of M's, little Mopar M's on it because we, it's technically it's a, a prototype, concept. so exactly. So uh, we didn't want to put it to a, use one of the bins up. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a fun vehicle. Um, you know, I would love nothing more at some point to see somebody who's got all the, all of the vehicles and have them all lined up throughout the year. So they had. 300, right? We had a 300 as well. I think that may have been 2011, actually. Yeah, and then they had a 2011 Dodge Charger, because I have the same Charger, yeah, yeah. And then they, have, they had a Mopar 10 as well. Yep. yep, Mopar 10 was our first year for the channel. Okay, and then did you do a calendar? No. Nope, we didn't do a calendar. And then there is no Mopar edition Viper. We never did a Mopar edition Viper. But there's Viper. probably like one in 20 yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun doing those, that's for sure, that's for sure. Alright, okay, alright, alright, so now the next concept is uh, our holy guacamole concept. Um, and we actually built this vehicle for spring for this, but because of the pandemic, that's right, yeah. we, uh, we, had to, we had to hold it back. So it's really cool that we're able to introduce it here. And, you know, we love to have fun with colors. Um, you know, I love the historic and nostalgic colors. And I was always a big fan of F.A. Breeze. And so we wanted to do something that, you know, kind of in the green family that took it to the next level. Yeah, so we created this. And we actually we actually call it uh, Ron Navicata. So we had some fun with the, with the color name of it. So in this color, actually, becomes one of the colors. What are we doing? Is it going to be To me, I mean, to me, that's what yeah, we have so much fun with right now. And I would love to see it, to see it stick. But, you know, right now, it's just a concept color. But we love to get feedback from people. And so far, it's been really positive on the experience. Okay, so let me ask you this. What is your favorite Mopar color? Mine is called Crazy Mopar. You know, I, think it's, I, do, I do love that color. I have to say that Destroyer Gray and F8 Green are probably my two favorites. Yeah, awesome. I, I have a white Challenger, though, right now, too. Yeah, so I love white, these. I have a white Challenger, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is it white knuckle? It's white knuckle, knuckle. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so, um, yeah, so some of the other things we did, we, we created a, you know, of course it has a 392 shaker in it. Um, we had some fun with the color of the, the shaker. Uh, we put a, a set of forge line wheels on it. We did a unique stripe, you know, and buried it under the clear. Oh, yeah. And you can see the, the 50. Yeah. And, it, and as I mentioned, this was done, you know, as the 50th anniversary, but as here we are 50, you know, with the 51 now, but it's all good. But the biggest piece really is, uh, on the inside is the, the color scheme that we oh, did with the, the, <laughs> the old school flag. Yeah, and that's exactly and the it. Like Just the, the, we wanted this old school kind of you know, super pop of a color. Um, and then the wood grain, you know, it's, it's those are actually aluminum um, inserts that are normally in there and we did a unique uh, finish on them to simulate the wood grain. 
So it's getting very polarizing, but um, um, we uh, we like it. That's a nice like contrast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually hoping you guys would put some wood paneling on the, the wagoneer. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we, like we keep hearing that. Cool. I'm sure. I'm sure next year at this show there'll be several of those around here. Maybe not in this booth, but somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we have the unique badge, the Holy Box of Holy badge in there. So. So I've got a qu couple questions for Mark. Um, what is your favorite SRT project that you've worked on and that you own? Yeah, oh, those are two good questions. Um, you know, the favorite one that I've worked on, I, I actually have to say the Viper program was probably one of the best of my career in the sense that when we were designing the Viper, we were also designing the, the race car Viper at the same time. So, you know, to be involved with such an iconic vehicle and doing both of those and, you know, so many people didn't know about the race car. So that, that, whole, that whole program and project was really something special. So I think that one goes down. It's hard to beat that one. Um, certainly Hellcat and Demon, you know, that is, you know, people always talk about the 70s, you know, late 60s being the, the heyday of muscle car. But to me, it's now, you know, and the Hellcat and Demon, I think, have you know really you know, put their place in, in that history so uh, to be a part of that those projects and then you know i fortunate enough to be able to own both of those vehicles so uh um, I, you know i've got a, a, a white knuckle demon that um, i don't drive too much but yeah. um i love looking at it just as much so. you taking it down the track not mine not i have yours. not yeah but um, i've been uh, fortunate enough to be able to do some uh, passes and uh, quite a few demons so so, fun fact, um, the SRT4 Neon, as you know, that I'm into, you do have an ECR that I'm just finishing building, um, was the fastest in the Dodge lineup, aside from the Viper at yeah. one time. That's yeah. true, right? Yeah. I mean, that was the car that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, bang for the buck, I mean, it did it all. It yeah. was such a cool package. And, did you uh, have one? Uh, I, I did not have an ACR, but I raced a, I used to road race, and I raced a, uh, um, uh, normally aspirated uh, showroom stock neon oh, for a while, cool. so that's yeah, cool. yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Um, and then you know that I have a Super B, the satin vapor edition, yeah, yeah. which I believe is one of ten, is what I'm told, awesome. Um, awesome. the way it was ordered in Canada, so yeah, um, anything else coming to the Canadian market that might be a little bit more special or numbered, like as you said, the, the Durango. Yeah, I think the, the, yeah, the Durango's probably going to be, you know, the, the next big thing for, you know, for the market, you know, only 50, it certainly keeps it exclusive, and, um, you know, our customers love when we do stuff like that because of the exclusive. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. I've seen that already. And then I guess the future of Mopar is going towards uh, electric and saving energy. How much, or I guess I should say, are we going to be losing any power or gaining power, but we're going to keep that muscle fuel? Yeah, yeah, definitely the whole industry is going towards electrification, right? Um, and um, we've come out and said that, yeah, we, we will have the you know, electrified vehicles in the future. And I think um, for any car company, including ourselves, to be successful is to keep the soul of the brand, um, even though you're, changing, or you're evolving and changing uh, drive trains. So I think that's that's the big goal for us, and we're working hard to make sure that, that we retain that so that our customers just, it's a seamless transition. Yeah. So do you have any questions for me, or? No, you know, other than, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks, and, you know, I love the passion that you, you know, bring, bring to the brand, and the enthusiasm, and being an ambassador for us, and that, it's great, because to me, part of the Mopar community is just that, you know, that chemistry that we all have. I love our products. Uh, you know, and I would be doing this if, even if it wasn't my job. So it's great to meet individuals like yourself, love what you're doing, and um, you know, we, we appreciate all the support. Well, thank you. Well, I thank you for your time. This is super exciting. I can't believe that I'm being able to talk to Mark uh, Trosen and actually talk about the vehicles with him, let alone beat him. So thank you so much for that. Um, thank you to Mo Car Stellantis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, as you know, I believe in 